I am forwarding the live if anybody's here. Boom. There we go. I have forwarded the live. Can't ask you to do something I don't do myself, can I? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to see y'all tonight. Let me see what we got here. Uh, perfect. 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 I'm trying to get the, let me get my camera set up here and doing right. Maybe it could happen. It could happen. Praise the Lord. Let's see. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing tonight? Who we got in here? We got, uh, whew, there's Kate. Hey, Kate. Praise the Lord. Good to see you tonight. Oh, my little bony hat here so I can keep my little bony head warm. Praise God. How's everybody doing? We are having ourselves a great time. God is good. All the time and all the time, God is good. Hey, Belinda, how are you? Praise God. Good to see you tonight. Good to see all of y'all. Everybody, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's Phineas. Hey, Phineas. Donna's here. Whew. Come on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting for my coffee to brew. We had to make a, a run over to uh, Dee's aunt. Um, and uh, we had to zip back over here and we come in just in time to get everything done. Ooh. We got to go to the VA tomorrow. So early to bed, early to rise, drive a long way. And they ain't going to give me, they're not going to do anything for me. Um, you know, I'm hoping they're going to, they're going to see us both and, yeah, uh, they 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 do the review on me and go, well, you know, Mr. Rescue, um, yeah, no, and uh, so um, D will uh, that maybe maybe D will get something out of it. I don't know. Praise God, we're not we're not looking to get any kind of money. What they actually is 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 if if she does anything, it'll it'll get a a higher disability rating. That's all. Um, parking place or something like that. About it. She should be at 100%, but that don't mean they're going to let you in there. Hello there, Mr. Tom. Praise God. Good to see you, buddy. And Tommy and Mommy of three, welcome home. Hallelujah. When I finally make it home. <laughs> Punish y'all for being good people. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome to Coffee with Clell. I don't have any coffee yet. It's in there brewing, and but I am Clell, praise the Lord, and uh, a traveling chef. Well, okay, Ray. Hallelujah. Um, so, um, welcome to Coffee with Clell. Coffee with Clell. I'm now. Uh, I'm Coffee with Clell, and uh, we now have uh, our affiliated Amazon affiliated slash associated through a link tree, and. Uh, if you were to, if it were working right, and you went on my 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 page, and uh, hit on my um, thing, it would take take you to a, a link. It would take you to Amazon. If while you were there, you bought anything, a few pennies would go to Coffee with Clell. Coffee with Clell is me. Uh, one of the things we'll do with that money, and it'll start coming in at some point. We'll get it straightened out. But is that we're going to um, we we'll keep the prayer cloth ministry free to whosoever, wheresoever. A prayer cloth is a square of cloth that we take and we anoint it with oil and we mail it to people for them to uh, pray with over. Uh, uh, people ask me, how do you use it? And I'm like, you know, specifically speaking, there's not a way to use it. Um, but um, it's, a, it's a good thing that, that people can know that there's somebody out here praying for them and stuff like that. We write the names in a book. This is the book. And uh, by request, if we were sending it to somebody that might not know what it was, then we would send them a a note. My wife wrote the note. I feel like it was inspired. Hello, Angela. 
I believe it like it was inspired by God. Forgive me, y'all. <sighs> Diddy didn't get in last night till three o'clock. I sort of stayed up as long as I could. And, um, we put this note in there, and then the note says, "Enclosed, you'll find a prayer cloth." God's word tells us to anoint and pray for the sick. James five and fourteen. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church. And they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in Acts 19, 11 and 12, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that when the handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Because of the times, it's not always possible to get to the elders or the elders to you. So we have anointed this piece of cloth with anointing oil. And we have prayed for you and your need, whatever it may be. We also write your name in a notebook, and we pray over the notebook every morning and night. It is our hope that you place the anointed cloth somewhere in your Bible, wallet, fridge, that when you see it, it is a reminder that God is with you and that you are loved and are being prayed for daily in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, um... If you want a prayer cloth, all you have to do is message me, direct message me, or you can email me. This is my email right here. If you run, send me a direct message uh, or email, I need to have a mailing address, a valid mailing address. Please, by all means, if you live in an apartment or a unit of some sort, you have to put that on there because the post office uh, tends to not deliver them if they don't know, even when they know your name. And I know... I know what I'm talking about. I retired 30 years as a mail carrier. And so uh, my wife was 20 years a mail carrier. We got 50 years experience, I can tell you. Um, we've got too many people now that take the easy way out, which is dumb to me um, because it's send it back because the address wasn't right. Now, the, that is a management issue more than it is your carrier issue because management is trying to force everybody to do this. You know, <laughs> Once again, folks, it's all about control. Praise God. So um, I've got a prayer list in front of me. If you have more items that you want to pray about uh, I, for the next few minutes, um, if I don't already have them, um, you can put them up there while I rattle for a few minutes like a rock in a hubcap. i seen that. Thank you. Uh, Ray, you find yourself questioning life and what it's all about. Life is, you know, um, for me, life's all about Jesus. Um, you're a traveling chef, so you, you're about cooking and feeding and, and, and serving people. That's a good thing. Um, we're going to talk about the rapture tonight and, and that we want to make it. And... The, the fact of the matter is, is that life is actually about relationships, okay? The, the fact of the matter is, is if you don't have um, relationships, then you are I got, I'm writing that down, Betty. Um, broken hearted anger and discernment broken-hearted um, so thank you Angela we don't need uh, we don't need any garbage we can take the garbage out hallelujah and Finn I see y'all uh, tag team whoever that was didn't let him get far at all <laughs> he must have said something nasty uh, okay there you go um, so um, life is about relationships. I got Jonathan right there. Yes, I ma'am, I do. Um, and and in these relationships, let's see, that was part of their family trying to, brother. I, yeah, welcome, welcome aboard. Um, that that that's happened more here lately. It seems like I've got more people with that exact complaint coming across here. They've uh, they've trusted people that they found out were untrustworthy. I, I hate that, but that's the, the it's the caliber of people in society today. Um, don't let who they are affect who you are, okay? 
and uh, you be you be good in spite of who they are. Hello, Adriana. Praise God. Um, yeah, Angela, we've been there, and you know that's the whole the whole smeal deal to it, man. Um, you got to uh, hold on and and keep sorting through. It's like you know you keep on sorting through. Yeah, making memories, make good memories because you're gonna have them one way or the other. You know, and uh, Jesus is the ultimate relationship. First thing and foremost, if you've got your evident your your relationship with Jesus, um, so I don't have to prove you wrong. <laughs> Creation screams his existence. Oh, me open ears. Hallelujah. Get that now. Yeah, get that uh, another red herring. <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus, prove me wrong. <laughs> yes, it is, Tadina. Yes, it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. God is so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. The, uh, what, we're, what we're looking for is a relationship with Jesus Christ, God Almighty in the flesh, personified, walked among men 33 years, three years in the ministry, and was crucified, died on the cross, resurrected, and it's coming back for his church. I'm telling you right now, quick draw, getting them. <laughs> I don't, I don't miss them. I'm gonna tell you that up front. I ain't got no use for the trolls. Uh, you know, if they if they come in and want to listen, that's fine. You know, um, well, you're in the right place tonight, Ray, because we're gonna talk about the rapture here in a few minutes. <laughs> How do we get done praying? But first things first, we're gonna pray. Hallelujah. Ray, is there anything in particular we can pray for you for tonight? If there is, pop it up there. Be brief. We don't. We're, we're not trying to get into a gossip column on you. So, you know, um, that's all. Hallelujah, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Hey, I got a feeling. What's his name, Stephen? Everything's gonna be about me coming in last night. Felt like I wasn't accepted. Sorry if you did felt that way, but uh, I don't. I didn't see anything to indicate any otherwise. Uh, how how would you feel you were not accepted, Pastor? Cindy. Cindy's got brain cancer. Golly. Okay. Amen. Look at praise report from Adriana. Hallelujah. Praise report. We like it. We like it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Amen, Estelle. Because I felt like I rudely loved you. You felt like, I felt like I rudely loved you. And I, oh, well. Um, you, oh, I'm sorry you felt that way. <laughs> Ain't nothing. We're okay. If I'm okay if you're okay. Hallelujah. Tell me your first name again. I keep on wanting to call you Andy or something, but it ain't it. Um, Kimberly's running a 103. Man, Finn. Got her. Whew. Oh, God, hallelujah. I thank the Lord for he answers prayer. Raise Ray. Ray. <laughs> We'd be tough on that, Ray. <laughs> Ray, oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, come in here. You preach. Tell me your name again, Pastor Woodruff. I forgot it. I, I keep wanting to call you Andy. <laughs> and, and, and you are, Pastor, you're always welcome here. Uh, <laughs> always welcome. We enjoy having you. Hallelujah. You know, it's a it's a great thing going on here, folks. Got the flu running wild down here. Do you? Um, reckon it's got anything to do with them skeeters, do you? Yeah. Um, they've already said they're expecting it to come up here pretty soon. Okay. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a God coming in here. Oh, the Lord said. Hello, Lori. The Lord said, hallelujah, Jesus. 
Glory to God. Okay, y'all ready? We're going to pray. I ask the Lord to usher in. Lord, in Jesus' name, we come to you. Faith, believe, and trust in your God. Lifting you up and magnifying you. The one true God, the everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. The King, the Mighty One, the Holy One. Alpha, the Omega. My God, we love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for this day and this opportunity to come before you. Lord, we want to pray tonight. And we we'll start off with this, Lord, asking you for Belinda, her health care, Lord. Oh my goodness, Belinda. Belinda's health care was canceled, Lord. We're gonna, we need that taken care of post haste. Hallelujah, there comes Margie, y'all. We're gonna put Margie on here. She's having surgery in the morning. Okay, hallelujah. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this and all things. Hallelujah. We ask you in Jesus' name to be with Belinda. God, she needs her health care back, restored, renewed, revitalized. Make it better than it was before, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now, in Jesus' name, we need to pray for Ernest and Tina. Tina lost Nick. And that family needs prayer, Lord. Hallelujah. The two Jonathans need to come home. They need direction. They need to, they need to find their way home, Lord, in Jesus' name. Stan needs direction. The children of Maui, God, right now. Hallelujah. Tanya has cancer. Kenneth needs a kidney. Hayden and Emily just need prayer. Trenton has a kidney and Tourette's, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, hallelujah. Amy, Aaron, Larry needs direction. Stacy Ray's having migraines. Tiffany has bladder issues. Lucas is, is, is having uh, troubles, and, and uh, that's, uh, that's Irene's grandson. Uh, Eva has some family issues. Sherry's got stage four. Shannon and Jocelyn need prayer. Brooks in New York. Hallelujah. Margie's having surgery tomorrow, Lord. Kimberly has a fever. Bobby needs needs a, a job and has health issues. Mom, Dee, and Piper need some family strife taken care of. Luke's has stage four. Amanda feels anxious and Jules has pain. And, and she wants to walk, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tammy Rio needs just a touch. Sarah Lou has a, a, I don't know how, how she's feeling. I'm hoping she's feeling better today. Rocky and Marcy both have stage four. Shirley's grandkids need prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Betty, Betty G needs, uh, she needs a touch, Lord, in, in Jesus' name. It, we're going to call that emotional, Lord. Just covering all those bases right there, just emotions. Katie need, has health issues. Donna and her gums, Lord, hallelujah. It was a bone spur. Ricky's eyes, Paul, my brother. Um, Wyatt has a growth. Elijah, um, he's, a, he, he's autistic. And he just needs a touch. Hallelujah. He needs, a, he needs to be at learning to speak. Uh, hallelujah. There ain't nothing wrong with him. Nothing wrong with that. Marvin has bladder issues. Austin is sick. The Okinawa troops, um, Caleb, and Cindy, Cindy has brain cancer, Lord, in Jesus' name. I'm praying for Roe. And, and okay, uh, Adriana is having throat issues. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Help her with that, Lord, right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Renee and Joe. Renee and Joe. God, in Jesus' name, be with our friends and our brothers and sisters. God, keeping your hand on them. Lord, this is the day and the hour, Lord. She needs help, and, and, and she needs a touch, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ray, we're going to try and straighten some of that out tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, okay. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. Yes, Renee, yes, in Jesus' name. We're trusting God. We're believing God. We don't know what he's going to do. Oh, in May. My, oh my goodness. All right. For the man that Sherry knows that lost his mom and his, his wife. Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, this is tough times. It's, it's hard enough times going through it with help. It's harder, so much harder. Oh, we're sorry about that, Ray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, be with, be with Ray, Lord, and help him as he endures this loss. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow. Okay. 
Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. We still got the fast. It's still going, folks. The unity fast. We're coming together, putting our differences to side so that we can fast and we can pray for one another. We can lift one another. We face a common enemy. His name is Satan, whether or not, whatever, whatever you understand. If you love Jesus, Satan hates you. Hallelujah. And he's doing his best to destroy the church on every level. Let us take a moment and unite. We, we, we are in our, uh, we'll, this, this Sunday will be the 80th day in a row that we've had this fast going that somebody has been on a 24 hour fast in conjunction, praying for the unity of the body of believers to turn back on Satan and take away the things that he has taken from the church and from our families and from our lives in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now we trust and believe you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you and we magnify your holy name hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus amen 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 hallelujah 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 amen hallelujah yes renee we're going to pray for your health and continue dear one and for 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 joe as well okay we're not going to stop we're not giving up we're not we're not giving in we're sticking with you hallelujah Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm going to run in here real quick because I got to get coffee. I can't get coffee. You can't have coffee with Cleo if you can't have no coffee. Okay? So it's going to take me about 30 seconds. Y'all don't let the air go dead. Y'all keep talking to one another, please. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, the doctor told me I had to cut down to four cups of coffee a day, so, whew, hallelujah. We're going to talk about Revelation tonight, y'all. We're going to talk about the rapture, and it is, and it ain't. First and foremost, the word rapture is not in the Bible, okay? It ain't there, all right? <laughs> But let's go ahead. Yeah, I know. Our water's out right now. All right, here we go, guys. Now, I'm not going to try to answer down here, so y'all forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm and when I hit my teaching mode. So don't get upset if I don't answer your questions because I, I can't. I, I ain't got one set of eyes. Well, I got two sets of eyes. But. All right, the word rapture. Is a, a feeling of intense pleasure or joy. I don't think that's the one we're talking about. Okay? But the second one is a transporting of believers to heaven at the second coming of Christ. Now, it comes from the Latin word rap, raptura, which means seizing. That's scared old Phineas right there. He don't want to be seized. All right? But rapture is seizing and carrying off. Now, if we if we think about it as something that's seizing us against our will, it makes us uh, sort of. You know, but but we are we are looking forward to the day when we will be seized up, pulled up away from the sin and corruption that is down below us. Okay, um, it is not in the Bible. Okay, but it is it is uh, noted in the Bible in Matthew twenty four, in First Thessalonians four, in First Corinthians fifty, in Revelation twenty. Um, and, and, and dip, there's, there's tons of verses that actually say that, but they don't say revelation. And so if, if you're going to, if you're going to hurt yourself on, on that, then, uh, I hate it for you. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal in semantics. I don't have time and, uh, you know, it, we've only got an amount of time on here. I don't have time to argue whether Adam had a belly button. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So, without further ado, if you have your Bibles, I want to read tonight the verses from chapter 24 of Matthew in the New Testament from Matthew 24, 3. Um, and I'm going to read until I quit. Okay, but first off, what we're trying to do is we're going to get to the we're going to get to the rapture, and we're not going to get to the rapture until uh, twenty nine to thirty one. But in the meantime, there, Sarah Lou, I hope you're feeling better, dear. If y'all have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, Matthew twenty four, verse number three, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be you, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh save, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and abideth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the, son of the, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together the elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable, the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near 
even at the doors. Verily, I say unto thee, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that no entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in which watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over this household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink, and be drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in the day, when he looketh for him, and in an hour that is not aware, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him the portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. The first question after after the, the after the the tootsie rolls come through and they go the rapture word's not in the Bible the rapture word's not in the Bible okay then 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 after that they go well yeah but we're in the church we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be resurrected out of the church so the, the the rapture comes before the tribulation okay and I'm like okay listen. What well, what I am doing, what I do, what I seek to do in a daily, daily course is to find out what the Bible says about whatever subject we are on. When I was a kid, I was raised up in a house where we believed in a pre-trib rapture. Okay? And what they would say is, is that, that, that we believe that the rapture was seven, or the, the, uh, we believe that the tribulation was seven years long and that the rapture happened before the tribulation started and then boom, seven years of beating up the Jews. Okay, that's what I believed when I was a kid. <clears throat> Later on, I went up and I said, oh, wait a minute. Um, then I just started moving forward and I decided that, you know what? Uh, I started studying and I didn't study much and, and I decided that the rapture happened at the three and a half year mark of the seven years of what I still considered a tribulation. It wasn't until I put what I knew, had learned, aside and began to study and ask God to show me the truth of your word. Where in scripture does the tribulation occur? Okay, I'm gonna tell you, folks. I'm gonna. I'm, we're gonna go over the Word of God tonight, and we're gonna go there. But I'm gonna tell you right now. If you think that the church is going to escape the Great Tribulation, when we start looking at the Word of God, you are going to see that it does not support that belief okay i've been doing the timeline over the last couple of days and 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 i have shown you repeatedly where the rapture comes up okay the rapture it's it's real late okay it's right before right before the lord crushes armageddon okay we are going to go through it. So is the church not the restraint? No. No. 
Um, that it's not. It's it's not. I didn't find it there. Let's start with the first thing. Matthew twenty nine through thirty one is the uh, is the account of the rapture. Okay, immediately after the listen. Here it is, right here in Scripture. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Don't that sound like him coming back? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, the final trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, amen, we're going to do that. We need prayers for hospice care. wants us to move but to a ground floor apartment or rental house. I hope you can, we're going to pray that you can find one. Praise God. Oh, Lord. Okay. So, now, we're going to move over here, and we're going to touch the scriptures that speak of the rapture. Now, like I said, I, I grew up believing that there was going to be the rapture and then all of these terrible things were going to happen to, to, the, to the, uh, the people that were left behind. If y'all remember, I remember watching the Left Behind series. If y'all remember watching that, that's what it taught, okay, was that, um, that the Christians were going to just miraculously, pew, we were going to disappear. I don't believe we're going to disappear. I believe we're going to be caught up. I believe we're going to raise up right in front of all the all of the sinner people, and they're going to see us leave. And they're going to be going, oh, man. <laughs> okay? God don't do these things in the corner. And and I didn't agree with the Left Behind movie when I saw it, but um, not for those reasons. Um, so, so anyhow, if you've got your Bibles, if you will go to 1 Corinthians 15, we've got another account, verses 51 to 53. 1 Corinthians, if you've got your Bibles, 1 Corinthians, Chevy, we ain't going to talk about October 4th, man. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 51, okay? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound... And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying, as written, death is swallowed up in victory. That was more than I was going to read. That's okay. Uh, just, just letting you know, we're, we're not going to talk. Uh, Finn, anybody that asked about it, um, we're we're not going to talk about it. Y'all can, y'all can, yeah, man, stick around by all means. <clears throat> but uh, what we're going to do, we're talking about the rapture, okay? And we've been working up to get here, and this is exciting stuff. And if this ain't exciting stuff for you, I, I'm sorry, I really am. But this is exciting stuff. It's exciting for me. That's the second account of the rapture. Listen, did you did you catch that? In the in the in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the last trump, seven trumps. That's the seventh trump. And for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, changed, translated, seized, moved, transported. Okay, and so we've got a second scripture that tells us that it is going to happen after the seventh trump. When does that trumpet sound? Okay, 
And so, okay, well, that's the second one. How about we get these people over here? Well, what about Thessalonians? Okay, what about Thessalonians? We'll go to Thessalonians too. Folks, I'm going to tell you all right now, if you're afraid of a scripture, you're in the wrong place. Okay? Uh, Thessalonians 4, verses 15 to 17 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Listen, we which remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The seventh angel again. Okay? The seventh angel again. The seventh trump again. Where does that seventh trump come? Okay? And so people have... I, I grew up believing... this. Other, I got it already. Believing this other stuff, I grew up believing it, okay? But the scriptures will not support it. If you're if you're using scripture to support pre-trib rapture, you're going to be using a book that somebody wrote. Well, you know, so-and-so in 400 AD, uh, he, he wrote a book and he believed in pre-trib rapture. I, I'm not telling you that people don't believe in it, but he don't use scripture to document his beliefs. He'll have two or three scriptures that'll be, you know, it, it'll be like, listen, dude, that's out of text. Okay, so in any event, what I've done here is I've used three scriptures in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Okay, Matthew 24, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15. Well, you know, I'm not convinced yet. Okay, well, let's go to Revelation. That's where the rapture happens. And I, I'm, I'm trying not to be insolent or ugly or nothing like that. Please, y'all. Um, I've been studying this, and I've been I've I've been I've been getting used as a battering ram for a little while here. So, um, uh, so so the my verbiage sometimes is reflecting on some of the people that I talked to earlier in the day, not how I talk to them, how they talk to me. Okay, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Hmm. Hmm. But the rest of the dead, this is verse 5, live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Oop, there it is. In the mouth of four witnesses, right there in front. Now listen, again, okay, if you want to believe that the, that the, the, that the pre-trib rapture, I don't think it's going to keep you out of heaven, okay? I don't think it's going to keep you out of heaven. That ain't one of the things I'm trying to purport here. If you don't agree with me, you can't be saved. Yes, you can. We're talking about the rapture. We're talking. We're trying to understand the end times that we're living in. We're trying to get to where we can understand this. Okay? Not interested in people that think that if, if I don't agree with you, oh, he thinks everybody's going to burn in hell. That ain't, I can't have said nothing about that. Okay, so um, no, what is Revelation 20, 4 and 5? No mark, no chip, and we're going to rule with Christ for a thousand years. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Oh, dog, I thought I had that marked. My bad, people. Forgive me. I hope y'all are forgiving mood tonight because I got some scriptures marked in here. All right, 2, verse 15, what does it say? Um, this is a different uh, tag on there. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by the word or by epistle. Wrong scripture. What am I looking for? Oh, it's 1 through 3. <laughs> forgive me. Like I said, forgive me. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren... 
by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that day, the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, I contend that the falling away was the, the dark ages. The, the dark ages was uh, the, the great falling away of the church. And so um, I, I'm, I'm not fielding questions on who I think is going to be the Antichrist. I don't think the Antichrist knows he's the Antichrist yet. Hallelujah. Stay in the realm with me. Um, I'm really not answering questions, so but forgive me. Um, <clears throat> so, so there we go with that. And look where we're at now. Okay, so it's not until the falling away and that the Antichrist is revealed. Look at that now. The son of the, the and the, the the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. How are we going to know when the son of perdition is revealed? When he sits down on the throne or, or stands in the temple and declares himself God Almighty on earth, the Antichrist revealed. He is going to be revealed three and one half years before the rapture. Okay? So... Let's go with that. Uh, folks, y'all are making a bunch of statements. I hope it's something good. I really do. Um, I, I'm, I can't read these. Let me, let me, let me tell y'all something. I don't know if y'all have ever done a live. Obviously, some of you haven't. You're putting all that stuff up there, and it's going by so fast, I can't read it. I gave y'all my email. If you have a question, an honest-to-goodness question, by all means, email me. You can direct message me if you have a question or if you want to make a point. But if you're doing it right like on this thread right here, you are wasting bubbles because it goes by so fast. And when I do, when I download this, those things are not on there. So I can't go back and recheck and see what you said. Okay. So, um, like I said, I, I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the, uh, and, and that's cool. I just letting you know, if you're, if you're trying to get my attention, I'm not trying to, to offend nobody. I can't read it. Okay. Um, it works for me. Enjoy. Have a, have a great conversation. I just wanted to make sure that, that you knew that I wasn't trying to be ugly about not answering a question and stuff like that. Most time, I don't even see them. All right, so there we go. Okay, now. And then so somebody's going to tell me, they're going to say, well, yeah, but they we're talking about the elect and the elect of the Jews and the elect. The Bible mentions the elect about 13 times, and it never mentions the Jews as the elect. The elect, the Jews are God's chosen people. They were chosen. Okay? The elect is the Christian church. And I'll prove that to you later on. Okay? Um, but it never refers to the Jews. At one time, it names it names the church angels. It talks about Jesus and it talks about the church. All right? No man knows the hour. Now, a lot of people want to get out there and want to get started talking about that. And they'll they'll say, well, how, you, how do you say you know when the uh, when the, when the rapture is going to come when no man knows the hour? Listen, I submit to you this right here, okay? When we come this when we come down this this line right here when we start moving down this timeline right here, it's not necessary for us to know the hour. If we know the season, all right. And what's more important is that you live a life pleasing to God. Because face it, okay, we're not, everybody on this page right now, there's 111 people right now. We're not sure that all 111 of us are going to live that long, okay? Somebody got hit by a bus. Somebody got bit by a snake. Somebody got had a heart attack, okay? Bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. You just had rapture for one. So I contend you need to live as though the rapture is going to happen in the next 15 minutes. That is to say, get your house in order, get your life in order, be living for God, be pleasing for God, be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with his Holy Spirit, and live an overcomer's life. Okay? That's, 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 what, that's how I preach it. Okay? Because the reality of it is, is this will not get you in or keep you out of heaven. Okay? So, so and I've seen people ready to go to blows over this stuff, and I'm like, Really? You know, because you don't agree with me. I'm like, come on, man. 
Because the reality of it is, is a couple of days ago, a I, 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 man dropped dead of a heart attack. All right? And what did the first thing they do when they said that? Well, he went on to meet Jesus. Thank you. They went on to meet Jesus. He went on to meet Jesus. He's the dead in Christ. And he's going to rise in Revelation 20 at the rapture. Fine and good if he lived for God. Because you see, we just got through reading that that is the first resurrection. The second resurrection is not going to occur until after the millennial reign. There's only two resurrections. There's a resurrection of the of 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 the of of the the faithful servants of Jesus Christ, and there's a faithful uh, the, there's a resurrection to the throne uh, the white throne of justice, and you don't want to go to that one at all. Okay, so where are we at now? So we had the falling away which I believe was the dark ages. The church, I mean, the church was decimated. The Catholics were coming out there and they were destroying all of the, all of the true church. Okay. The Catholics were sold out. They had bought into the kingdom. They, they, they were, they were, that's, that's where the beast is. You can agree or disagree. You can go and look at my lives. I've, I've uploaded them onto YouTube under Clell Eskew. You can go and look at them. You can decide whether you're not, you agree with me, whether you think I'm full of mud. It doesn't matter. Okay, the word of God's true and every man's a liar. So uh, <clears throat> I'm not against Catholic people. I know I'm, I got them in my family like most of y'all. I love them to death. I wish to God I could explain to them. Okay, hello, Jessica. I wish that I would be able to speak to them a whole lot clearer and, and let them listen. But they don't want to hear anything because they they're by and large have decided that they got the right thing. And nobody can know anything that they don't know. And I hate that for you, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the elect never refers to the devil. And we don't know the hour. And we know that the end is near. near and we got a generation that shall not pass. This is, this is the generation that is going to see these things happening. A lot of people, it was taught when I was a kid, it was taught that they were talking to that generation. And then that generation passed and uh, you're like, hold on a second. Oh, well, hello, Jessica. Me too. Me too. Well, we're having church here on TikTok now. And uh, we're going to be back down there at FTC soon, Lord willing. Uh, but so... The end is near, and the gener this generation is not past. So then we look, okay, and and then people are going to tell you this. Well, yeah, but you know, um, I, I want to cover these things. And and one of the things that they say, the people that don't believe that uh, that the church is going to go through the the tribulation, they'll say, but God wouldn't wouldn't let His bride be beat up. You wouldn't beat your bride up, okay. And, and God won't allow the church to be persecuted. Now, it, if you believe that, please don't put anything on there until you hear what I got to say, okay? Um, because it, it ain't got nothing to do with it. God isn't beating the church up, okay? God ain't beating the church up, folks. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9 is, is where they get that part of that from. And it says... For God hath not uh, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so people say, see, so the revelation, the in the the tribulation comes in, and the church, okay, is not appointed to God's wrath. Okay, and you're like, huh? Wow, what about that? Now, if you will, I'm going to ask y'all to go with me to Revelation 12 and 12. Revelation 12, and I know this is a lot of reading, but it's worth it. I promise you it is worth it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Whoever is asking about who was Revelation preaching to, I'm feeling like you're being um, ugly. If you can rephrase that question, we'll see. But if all you're trying to do is get an argument started, you'll be muted before you can get your next comment up, I promise you. Hallelujah. Okay, maybe two comments. Now, so, I think you're a troll. I'm just going to say it out loud. <clears throat> Revelation. 
chapter 12. Ready? Verse 12. Is it right? Okay, never mind. I'm just going to read the whole thing. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown, twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven head and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a, a pre place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was, uh, here we go, ready? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. This is called a parenthetical chapter. And what has happened is, this, this is thrown in here. It's, it's, not, um, it's not loose, but it's thrown in here. And this is what's happened. There's war in heaven. Okay? And after this, listen what happens. Satan has always been able to go up and accuse the saints of God. He's been able to go up there forever. Go up and accuse us. Go up and accuse. Now he can't. Him and his minions can no longer, after this, they are no longer allowed to go back into heaven. Okay, they were they had permission to go before the throne. Now they don't. They went up there. They tried to take over. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay? There is war in heaven. Satan gets thrown out. This is going to coincide right there with the with the um, he's going to, he's going to re be revealed. He's going to take up and it's going to begin the three and a half years of tribulation. God is not going to persecute the church. What is going to happen is that say if you if you were listening right there, okay, it said because he knoweth. I'm sorry. It says. Inhabitants of the earth and sea and dwell is come down to you having great wrath. This is Satan's wrath. The tribulation is Satan's wrath. It's not God's punishment. I misconceived that for years. And finally, God showed that to me. And I was like, oh my goodness, God's not beating up the church. This is Satan's wrath for three and a half years. It's not just on the church but it is especially focused on the church, okay? It is especially focused on the church and on the Jews, okay? But it's, it's, he's very, he just got thrown out of heaven. He hated you before, and he's just gonna hate you that much more when he comes down. And so, boom, here he comes down, and his hate is manifest and set on fire, and he's gonna take it out on the church of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so <clears throat> the war in heaven, and, and, and so, so when people say they don't think that God would put his church through that, I, can't, I, I don't have scripture that backs up that belief. You can believe anything you want. End of story, okay? You can believe that the sky is pink at midday, and it does not matter, okay? Because 
You get to believe this is America. So far, you can still believe what you want. All right. But it will not make the Bible back you up. So, again, okay, when people say um, God wouldn't do that to his church, he would not, okay, and he does not. Understand this, though. All these people, and, and here's what here's what happened. This, this happened back in the, I want to say the first time I heard about it was around in the 80s. Uh, the name it, claim it's. And the and people have taught the pre-trib rapture because they were able to keep people sitting in the pews because they felt like that if they got if I'm in church I'm gonna miss it oh hallelujah and then they teach them to name it claim it and they'd say okay the name it claim it is coming the name it claim it is coming I'm naming myself okay put a put a two hundred dollar seed in the in the in the collection pot as it goes around I'm believing God with you that you're gonna get that two hundred thousand dollars God's gonna magnify no he ain't. Okay, God didn't promise us that kind of stuff. Never did, never did, never did. Okay, <clears throat> the name it, claim it was so that the preacher got all of your money and there you are and you're still living in a hovel or you're still living paycheck to paycheck and the preacher's buying himself a new plane. Okay, <clears throat> because it was always about him, you naming it and him claiming it. Okay, if that's not true, then look at those big preachers and ask yourself, what are they doing in real time? With that kind of assets and that kind of money, they're making sure that they stay super duper comfortable, safe, and secure. That's what they're doing. And they're not doing what they should be doing, which is making sure that the people that are out here, one way or the other, I'm not telling you not to secure yourself. I'm not doing that. I, I secure myself fine, but I don't have to go out and put a 24 foot fence with armed guards around and I don't have to fly in a private jet just so as I can make sure that I don't come into contact with somebody that might be feel offensive to me. Hey, listen, I'll tell you right now, it ain't the way it's supposed to be. It never was that way. And praise God, we're not doing that. Hallelujah. So, so the, um, the, the, the next thing you go to, you say, okay, where are we at? Um, <clears throat> Christianity is not about me. It's not about me having a three-car garage and that brand new um, Ford Raptor truck that just come off the line over there with every bell and whistle, ping and pong going on. And, and I'm going to put my wife in a brand new uh, Lincoln Town car and we're just going gonna to ride around and look at, out at the peons and wave at them. Lord God, don't ever do that to me. Lord, don't let them like it happened to me. Let me let me stay, Lord Jesus, in the Word of God and and be able to relate to whoever I might come in, whether they be a rich man or whether they be a poor person, whether they have be homeless or whether they live in a mansion. God, let me be able to relate the Word of God to them. That's my that's my prayer. I want to be able to to touch and minister to people because Jesus died for those souls as much as He died for that guy in the plane. So so Christianity they taught was all of the time we were saying, you know, well, we're going to be raptured out. We're going to be raptured out. We're not going to have to go through the, thank God, we're not going to have to go through this. And they're looking at you like this because they never studied it. They, ne I didn't, I'm, I'm guilty. Okay. I knew what I knew. I believed what I believed. And when I read it and I didn't line up with what I believed, I would go, huh, isn't that something? And then I got in there and the Lord said, okay, now you study it. And I started to study it, and I, I, I kept looking at what, what I wanted to believe, and that's the truth of the matter, okay? What I wanted to believe, that the church was going to get raptured out, because somebody told me, said, you know, Noah built the ark, and seven days before the ark, he went into the ark, and the judgment of God fell on the ark and lifted it up, and he was lifted above the. And I was like, man, that yeah, that sounds like pre-trib rapture right there to me. And I used that for years and years and all that. And then I started studying, and I was like, um, yeah, no, that ain't it. That's not the reference. That, that's not. It doesn't. It does. It does make a pretty picture. But it doesn't line up with Matthew. It don't line up with 1 Thessalonians. It don't line up with 1 Corinthians. It don't line up with Revelation. Okay? So if there is an error in here, I promise you, I made the error. God didn't make a mistake. The Word of God is fitly 
framed. People want to tell you, well, there's so many different contradictions. And I'm like, no, you have made contradictions in your mind. If you will study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you will find that God is ready to help you come to understanding. But you have to come to understanding in obedience to the word, not in a with a rebellious spirit. Okay, God, show me. When these people come on here and they say, what do you have to say about whatever verse it is that, 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 that's biting their nails or what? And then, what do you have to say about this? I already know that what they want to do is they want me to say something because they have a point they want to make that is derogatory, blasphemous in often cases, but always rebellious to the word of God. So we like, oh, you know what? <clears throat> How about we don't talk to you? How about we talk to God? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask God. And when they come in here and they don't believe with me, please pray for me. If you don't, if you think I'm wrong, pray for me. Ask God to give me the direct understanding. Help me because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get past the part where everybody knows. Let's get to the part where I don't know. If you can't reach inside of yourself and say, hey, you know what? I might have been taught the wrong thing too because this was not taught when I was a young person. I know it wasn't taught when I was a young person because I remember what I was taught. Okay, and that was what we were taught. Don't worry, son. You've accepted Jesus and we're going to be raptured out. Okay, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. Oh, and then the wrath of the Lord is going to come. And yet and still, when I read in the book, I read the book, the, the, the book every year. I try to read it at least once. Most times I read it twice. And I read it. It's uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> I was in there for a minute ago. Uh, I ain't there right now. Um, but And, and we, we read in these and we see these things. And suddenly you see that what you've been taught by good people. I'm not beating them up. Okay? Please don't think I'm beating them up, okay? But they're good people, but they didn't study either. They were told by some guy that told them, that told them, that told them, and it was handed down because it was a great message to keep people sitting on your church pews unafraid and uninvolved and unengaged. Your preacher ain't going to save you. If I'm your preacher, I'm not going to save you. I don't have it in, you to, in me to save you. I don't have it in me to save you. I'm a man just like you. I have to answer to God just like you. I have to do the things in this book just like you. And if I choose not to do them, then to me, it becomes sin. If you choose not to do them, to you, it is sin. It's not a matter of whether I choose to tell you what to do. It's a matter of whether you choose to go in here and find out what God has instructed us to do. It is our reasonable service. God sent Jesus. He died on the cross. He didn't have to do any of that, and yet he did. And here we are trying to, trying to split hairs over what we think it ought to be. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, hallelujah. Okay. Amen. Amen, Francis. Hallelujah. So listen, that's what we're doing right there. So, um, so God didn't do this to his church. God didn't, God didn't put tribulation on his church. The devil's wrath, if we put that in focus, whoop, the devil's wrath is going to be three and a half years. The last three and a half years of time for man on earth is going to be the devil pouring his wrath out on the church on the Jews, and he's, he's, he's not a discriminator. He's going to destroy his own people too. Take the mark or don't take the mark, okay? And then we're, and we're going to deal, and at last we're going to deal with the with the vials and stuff, okay? And so the in, in Matthew 24, um, I'm coming back in because we're going to, when does, when does the tribulation actually start? Okay, the three and a half year tribulation. I'm going to give y'all some scriptures. I hope y'all got your Bibles with you. Okay, we're going to start with Daniel chapter number seven, verse number 25. Daniel seven, verse number 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out 
the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until at time and times and the dividing of time. Now, time is a year. Times is two years. And the dividing of a year is a half a year. That would be three and a half years. Okay? And he's just now got through talking about the beast that rose up out of the sea. Okay? The ten horns. Okay? The Antichrist will reign for three and a half years. Now, that was Daniel 7. Revelation, I'm going to go ahead, Daniel 12. Daniel 12 says, where is it at? Dog Nebit. I don't know how the exact, but it says 12, it, it says times, times, and again. Okay. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince shall stand for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time, and that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Hmm, I wonder where the book's written. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. All right. Seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run and to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, Daniel was told to seal this up because it wasn't for his people. Okay? <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can scan and find this real quick. All right, and it, Daniel says in, in verse number 80, says, And I heard, but I understood then, not then said I, O oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of those things, these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, that's the Antichrist, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirteenth day but go thou thy way till the end and be thou set free. Rest. Okay. Now, did you, did you catch that again? 1,290 days. Three and a half years. Three and a half years, folks. Three and a half years. And then we go back over again. And it's going to say 1,260 days in, in, uh, in, uh, in Revelation. Daniel had an extra week. That's my easiest, quickest answer for you on that. For those of y'all that are... Um, Revelation 12 and 6. Ready? 12 and 6. Revelation 12 and 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should, should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So the woman's going to be fed for 1260 days. She's coming out 30 days before the end of Daniel's time. Is there significance to that? We'll, we'll work on that. I'm, I'm not ready to answer that just yet, okay? Daniel 12 is covered with the time. Daniel's 70th week um, was not the week of tribulation. People want to say that means the seven, one day is one year. I, I used to believe that. Seven days was, was seven years. That's not what that is. Um, it, it tells you there's seven years from the time that happens. Daniel's 70th week begins at the abomination of desolation. One day equals one year. There's seven years, but it's not seven years of tribulation. Okay. And, and so then in Matthew 24, 
the abomination of desolation one more time. And I hope that I'm not, uh, I'm not belaboring y'all uh, going back and forth and reading. I'm reading the same scriptures more than once. I know that. Okay. And there shall appear in the Son of Man. And it says in 24, it says in the, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have that, that scripture, but y'all remember me reading it. The abomination of desolation was it was was in in the beginning of the sorrows on that okay and so we've got all these right here that tell us that there's going to be a three and a half year tribulation so then first corinthians tells us again first corinthians reads out and matthew 30 31 24 30 31 says and that then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great shout, sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All right? And then, of course, again, in 1 Corinthians 15, Got that in Mark. Let me see if I got it marked right. I hope I do. That was, I'm going to come back to that. We're going to talk about Romans here in a minute. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the, at the, last, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and the mortal must put on immortality. Now I want you to think about that, okay? We're going to put on immortality. That's the rapture. This, this has to happen before the rapture, okay? What's going to happen? Um, what's going to happen? What, what is going to show us these, these things, people that use the pre-trib rapture? I'm still working on this, folks. People who believe in the re rapture. I did. I believed that. I believed that the, the pre-trib rapture. I grew up believing it. I believed it until I was a young adult. I don't know how long ago I finally figured out it wasn't there. Um, but I want you to think about this. Revelation. Let me see. Revelation 9. 13. To 21. If you got your Bibles with you, I hope y'all got your Bibles with you. I hope there's a whole bunch of people flipping pages like me going, wait a minute, I can't keep up. 13, Revelation 9, 13 to 21. This is the sixth trumpet. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is said before God, uh, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Basically, um, if World War Three happens at the beginning. Okay. And the number of the army of the horsemen were... 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horse were the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by smoke and by brimstone, which issued out of their mouths for their power is in their their mouth and in their tail for their tail were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not to the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. This happens before the rapture. Okay? The sixth trumpet. Okay? The sixth trumpet. The peace agreement for Israel has to come in. You know, before the week starts, 
before the, if, let me get back on the timeline real quick. Before the week starts, the seven, the last seven years of Daniel. Not a good illustration. <laughs> we use a paint stick. Look at there. Okay. This right here, this, this form of a little paint stick right here. Okay. This is seven years right here. Okay. The abomination of desolation is going to occur right here at three and a half years. That's when the Antichrist is going to take over. Right here, we're going to have World War III. One third of the population, two billion plus people are going to die. 2.3, 2.6. Yeah, 2.6.530, something like that. Okay, if you do it in exact numbers, okay. 2.6 and some change billion people are going to die in World War III. Now, it doesn't say that World War III is going to be a one-day strike, right? George Bush said that it was going to be a 30 years war. He said that the first uh, the first strike back at the at World War III was fought when Flight 93 went down, when those men went over there and took that plane and, and put it into the ground as opposed to letting it hit whatever it was going to hit. <clears throat> I got my own ideas about that, and we're not going to talk about them. Um, but so that that was the first strike back of the war on terror. So it could be that over the course of 30 years, the two point whatever billion people, but in the end, it's going to culminate in a in a nuclear war. When they have the nuclear war, they're going to declare that they've got to have peace. And so they're going to come in here and they're going to say, listen, Israel can have sacrifices and they're going to be allowed back at the temple to do their sacrifice. This is the beginning of the last seven years. Israel gets to do the, the covenant is confirmed. They're, they're doing their animal sacrifices. As soon as they start doing, you've got world war three. Then this, then I believe it could be right after, but I think it's going to be right. It wouldn't make sense for them to do that and then have world war three, but you know, I don't know, but let's say that. World War III, then Israel gets to be, gets to have their sacrifices, and now they're fat, dumb, and happy again, and they're doing sacrifices, and Peter goes, oh my God, look what they're doing to those poor animals, oh no, it's so horrific, okay, and so then, all this time, these three and a half years right here, they're attacking Israel for killing those poor animals, and finally, the Antichrist, at three and a half years, comes down goes into the temple, declares himself God, got the false prophet pointing at him. That's God. That's God. That's God. He's going to heal people. He's going to raise people from the dead. He's going to do all these wonderful things for people. I don't know if he's going to raise them better from the dead or not, but he's going to do all these wonderful things for people. And boom, they're going to point him and hey, he's God. And he's going to stop the animal sacrifice. And he is going to become, at this point, the abomination of desolation. At this point begins the three and a half year Tribulation, according to Daniel 7, Revelation 13, 5 through 7, Revelation 12, 6, Matthew 24, Daniel 12, all of that line up for this to be the beginning. And Satan gets cast down and he is mad and he pours his wrath out on the church. The two witnesses come in right here. Right about the time he comes down, the two witnesses come in. They fight against him. He starts to trying to kill him. He does all he can to kill him and he's fighting against him. And all of these things are happening and they're, 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 they're bouncing off one another. They're trying to fight. They're coming after one another. They're being vicious to each other. Okay. And the two witnesses keep on thwarting him every time he thinks he's going to do something. Ah, goodness. You know, they're calling fire down from heaven. They're able to, to, to start plagues and all this stuff. And so that's where the, the tribulation begins. The church is still here. There is no place here for the church to be raptured. It did not happen. And so then you get right here and the tribulation begins. And um, I had my timeline over here yesterday. Let me see if I can get my timeline. There my timeline is. Okay. The confirmation comes in. World War III comes in. And, and somewhere in here, somewhere in this three years, I believe, is where the seven thunders that were sealed up in Revelation, I want to say it's Revelation 10, um, that John sealed the thunders up. So these are events that we don't even know what's going to happen right here. 
but it is in the buildup to the Antichrist taking the place. The Antichrist takes the seat as the on the throne, and, and Daniel's three and a half years, the Great Tribulation start. Somewhere in that portion, the fifth seal and the sixth seal and the seventh seal will be opened. Okay? All there's six six trumps have blown. We're waiting on the final trump. Okay, the vials will be poured out. How do I know that the vials won't be poured out until after? The vials are in um, the vials are in chapter sixteen, and I heard a great voice call out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, "Go your way and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth." Okay, so we're ready for the vials. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and greasome sore upon men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. That's the first vial. Where does the mark of the beast come in? It comes in at the three and a half year mark when the Antichrist has come to declare himself to rule. So, boom. Somewhere after here starts happening the seven vials, okay, and all their wrath and, and stuff like that. But and and it's not. Listen, remember we said it's not God's wrath on the church; it's God's wrath on the people who have not repented, okay. All right. So the first vial was right there. The two witnesses come in right here in the next one. Um, the power of the witnesses and the witnesses had to get. And, and the temporary tram and and uh, let's see. The vials being poured out cover, I want to say it's like three or four chapters. Okay. All right, where are we at? How good? Come on, Cloud. Two witnesses come in. You go all the way up here, and the seventh vial. is the same as the seventh trump and the seventh seal. All of them are the same. And you gotta ask yourself the question, what does all that mean? How 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 we how can all that be the same? All right, forgive me. All right. Oh my goodness. So animal sacrifice comes back into being. The world government comes to power. Now listen, in the meantime, the world government come, is going to come to power, okay? A lot of people are thinking, well, the world government's coming to power now. I think this is a precursor, and I'll tell you why, all right? The one world leader, all right, the, the false prophet, the antichrist, okay, they're coming to, to being, all right, and, and they're, they're coming up, and all of a sudden, we're waiting on that time. Uh, you know, we're waiting on you right now. The abomination of desolation is real. So you stop the sacrifices. And now I get to turn over and go to my second page. Of notes. I got three pages of notes, but I don't know if I'm going to make it tonight. Okay. This happens right before the church. The abomination launches the great tribulation for three and a half years. The mark of the beast. The two witnesses begin and buying and selling is halted. Okay. Confused how we went through the three and a half years. Okay, we're just now starting. This is the last three and a half years. Three and a half years of tribulation are going to start. All right, <clears throat> and that's what happens. The but it's happening before the rapture of the church. What I'm trying to do here tonight is to show that the rapture of the church does not come until right before Armageddon. All right, so that that's nutshell. In the meantime, buying and selling 
You can't buy or sell if you don't have the mark of the beast, either in your hand or in your head. If you don't have the mark of the beast, you can't be a part of our world and you can be persecuted legally because you aren't a part of our world. You're a non-entity, okay? The six vials are going to be released during the last three and a half years, the Great Tribulation. We don't know everything about what, it, what it's going to be, what the symbolism on those is, okay? Because it tells you that the first vial, when it is poured out, is poured out on those with the mark, okay? With the mark. And that is, is, is important for us to know, okay? God won't allow his bride to be broken up, all right? People will tell you that all the time. Well, you know, God's not going to let his bride be beat up. I'm going to ask you this right here. What happened of the 12 disciples, the people closest to Jesus all of his life, the people closest to Jesus? Have you ever read what happened to them? Okay. Have you ever read what? Did they all drive down the road in gold chariots? Did they live in illustrious houses? No. 11 of the 12 were martyred from being sawed asunder to being hung upside down. And John, they tried to kill John. They boiled him in oil. I believe that just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't burn up, John didn't boil up because God had more for him to do. And they sent him back off of Patmos and he became, it took back over position as the bishop over the churches of Asia, over the seven churches that he had written letters to. Okay, hey, happy. And, and so when people tell you that, that, that God won't allow his brother, you're a bunch of sissies. I don't, that, that, the, kind of, the kind of people that, that are going to make it to heaven aren't the kind that are going to be wimping out and running it the first time the persecution comes. Somebody comes in and goes, y'all Christians are sissies. Well, he hurt my feelings. That ain't a Christian. Now, you see, because we know it's all good. We know that we didn't come here to, to be petted and fawned over. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to be tough and resilient because we're going to have to preach the word going uphill and both against stream. It's not a matter of, it's, it's not, it's, we're not doormats on the one hand. Okay. You're not going to wipe your feet on us. But on the other hand, we're supposed to be winning people to God. We got to, I'm all things to all people that I might by all means win some. That's right, Sarah. Patty cake, Jesus ain't going to get it done. We're going up against a, a world in where it's going to be legal to prosecute you for being a Christian. The Noah laws are already in effect. They're only going to get worse, okay? As they, as they take and rise in their, their prominence of power, they're going to attack you much more deeply because they can. That's all they, they can, Okay, people say, well, um, you know, uh, I don't think God's going to let that happen. Why would you believe that? What in the history of the church lends you to believe that if it started with martyrdom and stuff, it's not going to end in martyrdom? That if, if the men were required to give their lives and to stand forth, that uh, I, I can't remember which one it was. I want to say it may have been Andrew or, or, Tom, or Thomas or Philip that was marching, said, and the, the guy that was marching him to the, that was marching him to the, um, to be beheaded, Marcy, I mean, he was witnessing to him all the way. And at the end, when he laid his head down, he put his head down and he said, I, 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 I believe I want to die for the same thing. I believe. I, 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 if it's against the law and I've got to be beheaded for being a Christian, then behead me too. This, I don't, what, did it happen? That's the story told. How in the world can you do that, right? How can you do that? So that's where we're going to go with that. We're not sissies, okay? <clears throat> it's Satan's wrath being poured out, not the wrath of God Almighty. When the vials are poured out, God's wrath is poured out on the people who have taken the mark of the beast, okay? They're sold out. They're sold out the opposite direction. So we're not worried about them. They're not going anywhere. They, are, they have sealed their fate when they took that mark, okay? Okay? 
So, um, so God's wrath is not on the saints. Uh, we're not naming it and claiming it. Okay, we had the, uh, the, the 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 Catholic Inquisition when it was coming through. I mean, it was just destroying anybody that didn't agree with them. All right. Um, oh my goodness, how illusion. Re Revelation seven four. Uh, when when it talks in Revelation seven about the hundred and forty four thousand, people want to say that's it, that's it right there. Okay, that's not it either, because after the hundred and forty four thousand, okay, hold on a second. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners, holding the four winds, and they should not blow of the earth and of the sea, nor of the, any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom was given to hurt the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And it goes through and it names off all the tribes of the children of Israel. And I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So, the 144,000, that ain't us, okay? That's the Jews. It said specifically from the tribe of this and from the tribe of that, okay? And, but it tells of the outer court opened up and without number, okay? So, that, 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 and listen, let me, let me say something here real quick. I'm going to clarify, Okay? To a person who does not want to believe, there's no amount of proof I can that I can provide. There's nothing. There's no amount of proof that you will ever provide for a person who does not want to believe what it is you're saying. Okay, for the person who wants to believe it, they're going to go to the Word of God and they're going to let the Word of God reveal it. And if if from reading these verses tonight has not brought you closer to God then you need really honest to goodness, and I'm not being ugly. I hope, I hope nobody thinks I am, but you need to really check in, in your spirit and ask yourself why you didn't come to it because it might be that you're afraid of coming to truth in God because you're afraid of something in your life holding you back from becoming who God would have you become, okay? The Holy Ghost just gave me that, so whoever whoever that was, I love you. I'm, I'm not trying to beat you up. Okay, so... Revelation 16, verse number 15. Everybody, stay with me here, if you mind. Behold, I come as a thief of in the night. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So we know he's coming as a thief of the night. I'm pointing that out because we're in the 16th chapter of Revelation. Okay? We're not way back yonder in the Paul Paul patch at the beginning of this, we're in 16th chapter. We're not talking about the beginnings of anything, but, and still he's coming as a thief in the night. Okay. Behold, I come as a thief in the night. Look where that comes at. Okay. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. What day would that be? And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And he's still coming as a thief in the night. And the armies are amassing at Armageddon. Huh. Now, are y'all with me? I've been teaching on rapture all night, Jessica. Hallelujah. Yes, I do. Okay. So, that was 16 and 15. Waiting on the sixth vial. God's wrath is poured out on the ungodly. The sixth vial is poured out on the ungodly. Okay, right here. The seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. All right. That was the seventh vial. The sixth vial. 
And this, the angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the king should be prepared. All right, remember, these things are going to happen in the last three and a half years. And yet, he still hadn't came as a thief in the night after the sixth vial. The sixth vial has been poured out. The sixth trumpet has sounded. The sixth seal has been opened. And there hasn't been a rapture yet. There hasn't been a pull yet. So what, how can a pre-trib or even a mid-trib rapture at this point? It's not there. Let's find out when the rapture does come. Now, and for us to do that, what I want to do is um, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb is in 19. Yeah, in 19. And so I'm going to be reading from, from 19. Let's go see what 19 has to say. This is Revelation 19, starting in verse number 7. I got notes, but they're in my hand, and my hand stinks, y'all, okay? Um, so the more I write, the worse it gets. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was great, granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto the... To, to me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened. Wait a minute. I saw heaven opened. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb right here. Is going on, okay? And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in the blood, and his name is called the Word of God. I don't know. Who's, does anybody know who the Word of God is? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he shall tread the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowl and to that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, Armageddon and them yet, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the king of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that they had received the mark of the beast and of them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowl were filled with their flesh. Hmm. That just happened. And I saw an angel, verse chapter 20, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the keys of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him with, and set a seal upon him 
that he received the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed a season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Ooh, there it is. Had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection. The first resurrection. <clears throat> The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years. Now, what happens at the resurrection? Let me see. That would be what we would call the rapture. Now, see if that doesn't line up with um, the sound of the trump and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That would be resurrection, wouldn't you think? Okay. Resurrection. This is the first resurrection. And we're caught up. Man, this is the marriage supper of the lambs right here. Okay. The, the, the abomination he's done did all of his terrible things, okay? The rapture happens right at the same time. Jesus is coming out, listen, okay? Right here, marriage supper is set, and then he saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. <clears throat> okay? That's the rapture. We go back here. The seventh, the seventh um, seal. All right. The seventh, where's the dog going at, Clay? I'll quit that. Got my notes over there, Summers. <sighs> Forgive me, everyone. 619. I got it written in there, but it's not, it's, it's all messed up. So eight and five, the seventh seal. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Okay. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets prepared to sound. Okay. That was the seventh seal. Listen to the seventh trump. 11:19 And the temple of God was opened in heaven the temple of God is opened okay the scroll back and there was seen in the temple the ark of the testament and there was lightnings and voices thunders and earthquake and great hail and the seventh vial <clears throat> is in 16:18 uh, and there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as not seen since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Yeah, I believe Jesus' foot is going to come down and it's going to land on, on Mount Olives and it's going to cleave all the way down, just like... Poof. Good night, Pastor. Oh, you're saying good night, Adriana. Adriana, got to go to bed? She got a cough. She's not feeling well. Okay, so... <clears throat> I don't deal in teaching negatives, okay? I'm going to teach you what I believe. If you believe something different, you can go on and, and, and try and find that out there. I don't think it's in there <clears throat> because I was looking for it. When I initially began to research Revelation, I was looking for the scripture which would support my belief, okay? Preacher of Rapture. Made me feel all good about myself because I knew I could go on and boom, 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 okay? But it's not there. And so the the only way you can see the rapture happening, here we go back again with my stick, okay? The tribulation starts right here. The witnesses, the vials, the sixth, sixth trump, or sixth seal, and then the seventh seal, seventh vial, seventh seventh seal vial and trump all right here the seventh trump is 
the call, okay? Boom, with the sound of a trump. <clears throat> you keep hearing the trump. You hear the final trump, and we're called up. That's the rapture. Right as these things are happening, right as the marriage supper of the Lamb is being prepared, according to what we just read in Revelation 19 and 20, okay? Right as the revelation. And so then the the rapture happens. The, the church goes through the rapture. We've got to be there, okay? Satan is going to come in to try and destroy us. That's true, but he's not going to win. He's a liar. The truth ain't in him. And and imagine if you're martyred during the, during the, the tribulation period, we know what's going to happen with us. We know where we're going. We're not guessing about what's going to happen with us. We're going to be with God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. All right. So that's where we're at. Uh, I'm making sure I got all my, my notes covered here tonight. Okay. You've got to cover all your notes. Okay. Um, the saints are killed during the tribulation, part of the first resurrection, uh, <clears throat> unmarked by the beast. Okay, the second death has no power over them. Ain't you glad about that? Hallelujah. So the, 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 the rapture and the second coming, I conclude that the rapture and the second coming are the same event. Okay? It's happening all at the same time. The church is going up. Jesus is coming out with the, with the final trump and the shout. The dead in Christ are raised first. And then we all go up to meet him in the air and we're going to go fall right in behind him. And we're going to be the army that's going to come down to destroy them at Armageddon. They're going to be on the, at the, at the gates of Armageddon. And, and th there they were, they come down and they're, they're coming in doing this and they're, they're trying to destroy it. And Jesus comes back in his, in, in the, as a King. You remember when he went up on Mount of Olives, they went and got him a little donkey Okay, when you, when a king entered into a city, under those traditions, when the king entered into a city, to let the, the city that he was entering in know that he meant at peace, he would ride on a donkey. Okay, it was an humble beast and he's riding in on a donkey. Okay, this time when the heavens open up, ain't no donkey to be seen. He is on a white horse. And he's got the sword of the Lord, the word of God, and his sharp sword coming out of his mouth. It's the word of God. He's coming in and we're going to be with him. And as we come in, as we come in, we're going to, we're going to be able to destroy them. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I saw that fin. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't think the tribulation has already started. Demonstration of privacy, not the least of which was a man who worship. Hallelujah. Thank God. Okay. Whew. That's it for my notes for tonight, folks. Whew. It's a struggle for survival. Um, making my point here real quick. If you've been watching, if you've been reading here, you've seen, you've heard me going over all of these different, um, different things. Let me tell you, I've got it all right here on my timeline written down. And I'm going to go over this timeline for you again, just so you can, uh, no, we ain't been through half tribulation yet. Um, <clears throat> let me tell you why. Okay. The first four seals started 325 AD. Okay. And then we got the first trump. The first trumpet was World War I. The second trumpet, World War II. The third trumpet was Chernobyl. The fourth trumpet was the wall of, of, of Germany. The fifth trumpet, Saddam Hussein. The sixth trumpet, World War III which will bring about the peace accord between Israel and the Palestinians or the, not, not necessarily, but the, the Arab nations, the sons of Ishmael. This will be called the confirmation of the covenant. And at that time, they will allow Israel to begin sacrificing 
on the Temple Mount once again. That will begin the seven years that people call the seven years of tribulation. It's the seven years, the seven final years, the last week of Daniel. But only three and a half of them, the first three and a half, are the buildup to the Great Tribulation. Okay? After the buildup to the Great Tribulation, um, it's time for me to get more coffee, y'all. My wife has come out here. Great woman that she is. Thank you, dear one. Excuse me, everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, what time is Jordan getting here? Hopefully within the hour. Okay. They got to leave around 4.30. All right. To get to the hospital. Okay. I'm going to get to Thank you. Uh -huh. Josie, you're wrong. Um, now, you could be right, but I think you're wrong. How about that? Is that better? Okay. You think I'm wrong? That's fine. Uh, so... Where was I at? So, okay. The World War Three World War Three Yes. Seats us in a situation where the final seven years begins. Now, I've got these all on YouTube. You just look up my YouTube, Clell Eskew. The last ones that I put up have been dealing with this timeline that we're talking about right now. You can go to them and watch them if you want to. And agree or disagree, you can uh, you can email me whatever kind of questions you got. Hey man, I think you're crazy. I don't think you got it. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm not telling you my research is any better than yours. I'm telling you the word of God is true. Now, having said that, the final seven years begins. For the next three and a half years, we have the build up to the Antichrist. The um, the thunders, I believe, are going to go off during this time. I don't know what the thunders are. God told John to seal them up. We're not, you're not going to get to tell people what they are. So there's going to be some things. That's why I tell people, you think we're in tribulation. I don't think we are. We weren't told everything. All right? But we have some definite things that we can look for. And there is no peace in Israel. They are not sacrificing on the Temple Mount. If they're not sacrificing on the Temple Mount, Daniel's seven weeks, seven, Daniel's final week, seven years, cannot begin. Can not begin. Okay? It's a cutoff, man. Okay? Because they're going to be able to, to renew the sacrifice on the Temple Mount. So... All of a sudden, we've got them doing the temple. They're, they're, they're sacrificing the little, the little sheep. And the PETA people are going ballistic crazy. Oh, it's terrible. Look what they're doing to those poor little sheep. Okay. And they get out there and they begin to do what they do. And they start to scream and cry and holler. And the next thing you know, the, the Antichrist is coming to power. And <clears throat> the false prophet is coming to power. And so, as we move forward with this, the the Antichrist coming power, and and their the buildup is coming, social buildup, etc. Now we're supposed to be at peace now, peace, peace, peace. Okay. Now when the Antichrist takes over, he's going to be the one world leader. The, he, he's going to he's going to be an absolute authority. He's going to declare that he is God on earth. He's going to stand in the temple where they put the sacrifice down. He's going to stand there and declare himself God Almighty. And once he repeats God Almighty, once he declares himself, you'll have to ask me that when I get through, Ginger. Once he repeats God, that he's God Almighty, at that point, Daniel calls that the abomination of desolation where in the last three and one half years of the tribulation. Now, am I wrong? I, of course I could be wrong. I'm a man. Okay. And I'm reading um, symbolism and prophecy, but I believe it's put together pretty darn good. All right. After the abomination of desolation sets in. The Antichrist is ruling the world. The false prophets ruling the world. The two witnesses come on the scene. Okay. The fifth seal is, is opened here. Okay. Then the sixth seal is opened here. 
I believe the sixth seal is 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 is, is the rapture in there, in there, right, right in there, right in there. And the rapture comes out. The two witnesses die. Listen, I can tell you something. I believe that the two witnesses die. They lay in the street for three and a half days, and then they wake up, and the Lord receives them up into glory. I think that's the rapture. Why? Because it looks just like Jesus going up and just like Elijah going up. They were both went up and they were all went up and received into the clouds. And boom, there we go. And so then the, the rapture comes. We go up in with the army. We come back with the army. We do Armageddon. We destroy um, the, the, the armies of, uh, of Armageddon. Brum, wipe them all out. The blood is up to the horse's neck. For the, the entirety of the, 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 the Jordan Valley and the Valley of Megiddo, that's 160 miles of blood. That's quite a few people. That's billions of people being killed right there as God, Jesus Christ, churns out the wrath of God on them. Okay, so um, what, what, what are we doing with that? The, uh, the, the, the trump, the veil, all of them sounded right there, boom, 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 and then... That's where it happens. That's where it goes. So then you end up with the um, the thousand year reign. Okay, the thousand year reign. Jesus Christ reigns on earth. It's uh, yeah. The the army, the battle of uh, Armageddon. Will will come down through the 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 the, the plain of Megiddo, which uh, the plain of Armageddon, come down the Jordan Valley to the to the very gates of uh, of of Jerusalem right there. Half of Jerusalem will fall, according to the scriptures. Half of Jerusalem will fall. They're fighting over the city. They're 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 doing all that, and then Jesus is going to come back. We're going we're going and it's going to be settled for once and for all. After after Jesus had the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then Jesus is going to rule on earth for a thousand years, and then they're going to release him again. I haven't I haven't got my notes together to, to go any further than that. I'm just trying to give the timeline. Now, Ginger had asked something about the first four. What were you asking, Ginger? Daniel 7 says who the Antichrist is, his name, and as of today, he has fulfilled 26. Daniel 7, don't say that. It don't, it don't give his name. Daniel 7, just don't do that. Let me see what Daniel 7 does say. Give me a more of a closer reference on that so I can see. Repeat the one, two, three, four. I did get the wall, but I missed the other. Okay. The the trumpets, the first one, World War One. We had never had a war where a million people had ever been killed. Okay? A million people had never been killed. And all of a sudden we had World War One. And if you read, go back and read the first Trump, they used the scorched earth policy and so they burnt everything in between the armies so that the, the it was cleared out it was nasty it was filthy and they used the first time they used the uh, they used uh, weapons of mass destruction they used chemical warfare and biologics the second seal was world war ii in world war ii 52 million people were killed one third of the shipping you can go back and do your studies. One third of the shipping was destroyed. That completes for the, 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 the thing for the second seal. The third, the third trumpet, I said seal, I meant trumpet. The third trumpet was Chernobyl. Chernobyl in Ukraine, okay, in, in, in Ukraine, the, the, the Ukrainian language, is wormwood, which ranks right there. This great star that fell was called Wormwood. And in Ukrainian, it would be called Chernobyl. And if you look at that and you ask yourself, what would John have seen had he had he seen that? Oh, yeah, and by the way, in, 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 uh, in the, the second seal, um, John also saw a mountain of fire, which is what a, a, a nuke would have looked like to a man who had never seen anything even remotely resembling a nuke. He saw a mountain of fire. A mushroom cloud looks like a mountain of fire to me. So then three is Chernobyl. Four is the wall. Okay. Uh, it's a shortening of times. And there's, there's, I, I, I did all this last night. I talked about all this. Number five was Saddam Hussein. 
um, Apollyon and the other one that's named in there, both mean destroyer, and so does Sodom. Sodom means destroyer. His mother had trouble in childbirth, and she said she named him that because he almost destroyed her. And the sixth seal is World War Three. All right. Oh man, hallelujah. Who? Well, Ginger, praise God. She sent me to y'all. Hallelujah. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Did I miss anything? Uh, y'all been y'all been re doing really good tonight, folks. I'm gonna tell you that up front. The troll patrol was on the word. Seals or trumpets? Um, those were the um, seven trumpets that I just talked about. Uh, you think about the summit? Um, I don't pay them any attention. The Berlin Wall. Are we in birthing pains? I I, I don't know how to form that for you. I, I don't know how to form that. Are we in birthing pains? Um, I think right now we're, we're, we're firmly ensconced in the, in the church age. We should be in, in birthing pains in that we should be in revival right now. We should be in full fledged and we're not. If y'all remember last night when we talked about the two horsemen going to the north and then in Zechariah talking about the, um, the two, um, the, the black horse and the white horse going to the north and they quieted their spirit. I believe that is Catholicism and, and, and capitalism. And both of those don't want, um, they don't want evangelism because the, um, they hurt commerce. People start tithing to the, to, to God's church and they start get investing in, in men instead of investing in the stock market. And, and, and they, they demand that the, the church ha give them biblical answers and they're not there for the, 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 the Catholic church doesn't have answers that it's ready to give. Okay. They covered it up back in the days. If y'all remember all of them and stuff and, uh, capitalism died in the eighties with the merger laws. Okay. If you say so, bro. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a economic expert. But uh, with 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 our um, people coming to power right now, we're we're more and more socialist, communist, which is red. But you know, um, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what's going on at the summit. Uh, they're trying to get a one world government set up, okay? And then the next person's going to say, but so that, therefore we need to see the antichrist. The antichrist is not going to be revealed. I don't think the antichrist actually knows he's the antichrist yet. Okay, I think the devil's spirit's going to move in and possess him. I don't think so, Michael. I don't think Donald Trump has anything to do with it. Uh, hallelujah. That's that's what I, I you know. It's just it's how I see it. I ain't telling you I'm right. Okay, the Antichrist, from my study, the Antichrist is going to come from the revived. Roman Empire, okay, that's it's the the Holy Roman Empire is revived, and that's where the that's where he's going to come from. I don't think so. I don't think he's coming from the Vatican. I think he's going to actually probably. I believe he's going to come from Germany. Germany is the seat of power. More popes came from Germany than any place else. The royal family, the king and queen, okay, the Germans. Elizabeth was a German, guys. Okay, so that was one of her conflicts in her early on thing. She 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 uh, she thought there should have been peace because you know, here I am. I'm a German. I'm the queen, and y'all can't get along. What's up? <laughs> All right, because it was didn't have nothing to do with being queen queen. <sighs> Hallelujah! If you read um, Daniel, what'd you miss? If you read Daniel, the um, the the Roman Empire is going to be revived. The Ten Toes is going to be revived. I believe it. Now, like I said, it's prophecy. You can disagree with me. It's not going to matter. What matters is whether you're ready to meet Jesus. 
What matters is whether you have repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and lived an overcomer's life. That's what matters. This is interesting. This is fun. This is challenging. This will cause you to go and study your word. This will cause you to go in here and ask questions of God. And when you begin to ask questions of God, he's going to light the fire and the zeal in you. And you're going to dig deeper and you're going to dive deeper into his word. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay. As much as I want to be right, I want to make sure that I got what the word of God says more than what I, what I want to believe. I actually started to, to study it looking to find out that I was right. I believed, I was raised to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I thought the tribulation was going to be seven years. It's not. I thought that the church was going to be raptured out before the first vile, nothing, none of that. I thought that all of all the seals, the trumps and the vials, I thought that all of them happened in that seven year period. They didn't. Okay. Uh, so, I was awesome, Jason. So I was, I was, I, if you was down here, I'd take you to the river and baptize you myself, man. I'd be so tickled. Hallelujah. That'd be awesome. Sit down. I'm figuring Sit down. one of them had something. The other decided it was his. <clears throat> Didn't go well for him anyways. Okay, the dog fight. They don't usually do that. Obviously, I know. All right. My son's over. He's got him. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, they're okay. It's okay, bud. It's okay, baby. It's all right. He's gonna come over here with me. He's got his, he, his bleeding from his ear. Okay. You're gonna have to apply pressure to it. Come here, buddy. Come here. Where you at? No, we're gonna have to like get up and get active. Come here. And Shh. put pressure to it. Where you at? Uh, yeah. Where you at, buddy? Okay. Poppy's got you. Poppy's got you. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. Shh. What's going on with you? Shh. It's okay. I got you. I got you. It's all right. Good boy. Good boy. Nothing but a little ear scratch. All right. Guys, I got to go take care of this. Love you. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow night. Put some corn and starch on it. Stop the bleeding. Okay. See you tomorrow night, 9 o'clock. God bless. <laughs>